Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. This is Greg. Today we're going to make some orange chocolate candy, and it's going to be great for times like Easter. And we're making this thing using cocoa powder, which solves a problem. Most chocolate candies to me taste like wax, but this one tastes like chocolate, and then it fades into orange. Jake added the orange oil, which you saw in that little vial, to the hot candy and then poured it on the candy cooling table. And now he's adding colors, because we need an orange component and the rest is going to be colored brown. And it'll be colored brown by the cocoa powder itself. If you look carefully as he adds the color, you'll see that he's stirring it in and the color starts to boil. This is because the color contains some water in it. And the water evaporates out because the liquid is not water. It's molten sugar, and the molten sugar is so hot, it raises the water in the food coloring past the boiling point and boils out all the water, keeping the candy from being sticky. The white powder is citric acid. As the orange flavoring has no acid content, you don't get the sour of an orange, and we have to add it in retroactively. And now, Jake just works the cocoa and the citric acid in, so when he does the next step, hopefully the cocoa powder won't go all over the place. And truthfully, it does a lot of the time anyway. And now it's time to do the break. Break the bars away from the candy. The candy is partially cooled here. The center is still hot and molten. The edges where it touches the metal is cool. And Jake has to even out all the temperatures. And he does this by folding. We usually do this with dripping the candy too, but the cocoa powder goes everywhere. So this is more of a delicate process than we normally have to do with the candy. This candy is part of an assortment. We make chocolate orange, chocolate black cherry, chocolate pomegranate, chocolate strawberry, and chocolate raspberry. And if you want to try this candy for yourself, you can get it at www.pd.net. We ship to most of the world, so we can get it to you almost no matter where you are. Jake is building the orange stripes. They'll be a bit muted because they'll be hidden between the chocolate, which is a dark color, but hopefully it'll allow you to identify the different flavors because each of the flavors is in a different color. This is part of our Easter assortments. We have more than one of them. We have these chocolate fruit drops. We're gonna have some old rabbit rollers and chick rollers from the 1800s making drops in marshmallow flavor. And we're working on a third one, which will be an image candy assortment of all sorts of Easter themes. We haven't done this for a number of years, but we've had enough requests asking for it. We thought it would be fun. So over the next couple of days or weeks, you're going to see new flavors appear on our website. Jake stretches the candy, preserving the stripes, and he cuts off a hunk to put through our old candy press. This press will make square chip shapes, 
and it was made in 1879, so it's older than we are by a long shot. But I love a piece of machinery that was designed to work for a very long time, and then did. Can you imagine thinking about building a machine that you're designing to last for a few hundred years? You know it'll be used long after you die? Think about the pride in the manufacturing of this stuff, and it shows in the quality of the equipment. Sadly, there isn't much of it out there, and people ask me all the time, where do you get it? The answer is from old candy makers who want it to be preserved. And they call me up every now and again and say, I've got this, would you like it? And I feel because of that that I'm part of this tradition that's been passed down over the centuries. If you like this video, please subscribe to us here on YouTube and click the alerts button. We currently have just over 500,000 subscribers and we're trying to get to a million. And you can help us. Just get a half million of your friends to subscribe and we'll be right there. I also do a weekly podcast called Lofty Pursuits that may be a little less about candy and more about my life and the intersection of art and business and life and how they really aren't different things to me. Of course, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we have two Facebook pages, Public Displays of Confection for the Candy and Lofty Pursuits for our retail store. Now it is time to break the candy into individual pieces. Jake does this both by dropping it and by scraping it across the table with a scraper. Thank you for watching. If you ever make it to Tallahassee, please come for a visit. You may be lucky and catch us making candy. We make candy a lot. We don't make candy all the time. But we are open 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. right now. And we serve great food and we have a full-service soda fountain. And this is all in the middle of our toy store. See you in the next video.